Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to today's chat. Today we're going to talk about sewing as a legacy. Um, just those memories of who taught us to sew. Um, what were those first feelings that you had when you uh, became a sewist? And how will we give this gift of sewing to our daughters, granddaughters? Um, how does the legacy go on? So stay tuned because we, we all have a lot of fun always on these chats. Okay, well, welcome everybody. I see there's a few people here already, so pretty excited to see everybody. Hang on one second. Of course, I have to adjust something. It wouldn't be my chat if I didn't, right? All right, let me get these comments up here. Hi, Melanie, or sorry. <laughs> I can't read today. Hi, Michelle. Nice to see you. Good morning to everyone. Hi, Heidi. Wow, lots of fun people here today. Brenda, Ivy's here, Kathy Ann. <laughs> I've got to bring this closer so I can actually see who's here. <laughs> All right, well, welcome, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm looking forward to, to this topic today. I thought of this because um, it just came up recently that a, a, a friend of mine, you know, their, their daughter wants to learn how to sew. And so I was um, really thinking about that. Like, how does my, um, how do we pass on that love for sewing or being a maker or crafter or whatever? How do we hand that down? Um, chances are our kids are cut out like us, so they probably are have the gene or whatever to want to do it. Um, so let's just talk about that a little bit. Um, and then, of course, we'll chit-chat a little bit as well. But. Hello from Kentucky, Brenda. Nice to see you guys. Hello, Lynn. Secret Siren from Chicago. Elizabeth from Cleveland. Hello, hello. So, uh, lots of you had rough weather yesterday. We just missed us. So that was really nice. But, um, yeah, just uh, the same old here <laughs> going on. I don't know what you're sewing or what you're up to this week. Um, we had birthdays, May birthdays. I can never do me made May because we have one, two, three, three birthdays plus, I'm sorry, four birthdays, plus Mother's Day in May. So I'm any sewing I do in May is always for the kiddos or my husband um, and so forth. Bought my daughter, bought my daughter Miso. Is that a, is that a um, little machine or is that a software? I'd love to know. Um, so let's start with the first question, who taught you to sew? Well, you guys probably know from the name of my channel that my mama taught me how to sew. And um, my earliest memories of her sewing for me were that she would go in a room and in a few minutes she'd come out with something fantastic, <laughs> you know, um, something for my dolls or something pretty little dress for me to wear. But I just always remember that feeling of there wasn't anything, and then there was something. So how about you? Who taught you to sew? Oh, also, um, toward the end of the chat, um, we'll talk a little bit about the Love Notion sale. And I haven't had as many posts as I normally do. I'm so sorry getting ready for this surgery has become a full-time job. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, you have to go here, then you have to go there. You know how it is. It's and with in the in the uh, in the uh, season of COVID, you know, is just complicated. But 
Anyway, I am very excited um, to talk to you guys about this today. And um, yeah. Sewing machine. Okay, so <laughs> that's all right. My typing isn't great either. That's why I have some stuff automated. Because <laughs> if I didn't, it would be really bad. <laughs> You're sewing now. Good. So I made the uh, everyday play dress for my littlest granddaughter. I'm going to show you some pictures, I think, here. Uh, if I can find them quickly. <laughs> um let me see. Oh, I know how I'll do this. It'll be easier to find them on here and then send them over there. Um, I made the everyday play dress as a bee dress. So um, it turned out adorable. I sublimated the bee from the fabric onto the uh, bodice of the fabric. So it was pretty cool. And I'm just going to show that to you here. Let me make it a little smaller so you can actually see it. Yes, here is the bee dress. And that was for my uh, granddaughter who's turning five. And she is in love with bees. So she actually. Uh, I think I showed you guys this in progress the other day. So that's what I made for Dottie. And then for my older granddaughter, I found a pattern that I really had never noticed before. And um, hang on, find it. Uh, it's called the, Lin uh, the Luca, and it's a jumpsuit. And this is the best picture I could get of it because I actually forgot to take one at home like I normally do. So I had to have her hold it up. So I'll show that to you too. It, it's a really cute pattern. Um, this one was from uh, Little Lizard King and it's called the Luca. And let me make this smaller so you can see it. And it was a cropped jumpsuit. I don't know if you can see, but there's a ruffle down at the bottom um, on the hem and there's the ruffle detail up on the bodice. It was fun to make and very easy and very quick. So that's a great pattern. I made a size 12. She was turning 10. So if that gives you any idea of the sizing. So um, that was kind of my sewing this week. Um, I did a bunch of shirts and let's see what else. Um, you know, t-shirts for uh, the musical. I found some cute ways to put uh, a part of the lyrics to the Hello Dolly songs on t-shirts for them. Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys. All right. Let's see. I got some answers to questions here. Lynn, she says, I learned as an adult at the high school level. They had all kinds of classes. I made Damon drag my heavy Kenmore <laughs> handed down to me by my mom. She only sewed a few things when she was young. You know, I I learned on a Kenmore too. It was it was actually pretty neat. Um, let's see. <laughs> Oh, that's sweet. Thank you, Ivy. Um, Kathy Ann says, my mom sewed but wasn't great at teaching. So she sent me to sewing classes, probably middle school age. And then when I attempted high school, it took four years of clothing and I loved it. That is cool. Okay, now I'm trying to get to the bottom of these uh, comments and it doesn't want to scroll for me for some reason. Well, sorry, I can't stick your comment up there until it scrolls up. But um, anyway, I that's what I remember is my mom sewing. And then I remember the very first thing I sewed. It was, it was football season. I, I mean, I remember sewing before that. Because you guys have seen when my old um, 
entrance in the uh, video loop or whatever used to have the picture of me at age three sitting at a table sewing. So I sewed, you know, sewed <laughs> when I was really little. Um, they let me kind of play with it. And I made doll clothes. I had one of those little singers that's about this big that you crank. And I would put my little Barbie clothes in there and crank it up. And, and I made skirts and cute little things like that for my Barbies. So not counting that kind of stuff. When I was in about fifth grade, um, I was, uh, we loved to go to the football games. We've been a football family our entire lives. So um, I wanted a poncho. <laughs> they were in style then, like they are now. But I was really going to style with it and it was uh, it was double knit which I would guess right now if that was around they'd call it a Liverpool or a Ponte and it had one of those big exposed zippers with a big round gold ring on it and I made that and um, that was a lot of fun um, really enjoyed that too and that was the first time I got that feeling of I made this myself so it's just such a great feeling um, and I think that uh, if we want to pass on our legacy, I think we want to give people that feeling. We need, we need to give the kids the experience, make sure it's a good experience, uh, make sure that they succeed. And uh, definitely, um, definitely need to help them along with that. Uh, Kathy Ann said she just sewed up three dresses and three tops. Five out of four patterns, easy tee, tunic dress. Uh, you cut out three pairs of pants and three pairs of shorts. Boy, you are sewing circles around everybody. Um, Peekaboo Jordan joggers. Gifts for skinny and tall three-year-old. <laughs> cool. I, um, I have, you know, pretty normal-sized grandkids, so I, I can usually just sew whatever their age is and size, and it works out okay. Um, my daughter's girls are tall, so I usually go up, you know, size up a little bit. So, Ivy says, I have to give my mom credit because she taught me to mend. Oh, good. That's really good. Um, hem and sew on buttons. That's all she knew how to do. However, she did constantly encourage me. Oh, that is so cool. I, I love that. Um... So remember that feeling of the first time you made something and the joy that brought you. Um, I don't know, share your experience here. I just remember going to school, uh, the, the football game was after school. I remember going to school that day when we went out to the football field and putting on that poncho and everybody saying, oh, where'd you get that? And I was in like fifth grade and I think that most of the moms knew that I made it, and so they were making a big deal out of it, you know, probably to make me feel good, which is good. I mean, it did look pretty good, but <laughs> I don't think that they, I don't think it looked like it was bought from a store or anything, but um, just that feeling. And um, so let me, uh, tell me what kind of feeling you had the first time that you made something, because that's the feeling that we have to leave behind. That's the feeling that you want your uh, granddaughters, your nieces, nephews, boys, sons even. I mean, it, it's not just women who sew. There's a lot of tailors out there. And there's a lot of men who design um, high fashion. And there's a lot of men who are straight that design high fashion. You know, there's that, uh, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> I... <laughs> Stereotype. There's that stereotype that, you know, if a man's in fashion, he must be gay or whatever. But honestly, that is not true. Uh, I've known a lot of men who sew who are just, um, you know, and even even so, um, you know, they're all fun people anyway. So, My first garment really boosted my self-confidence, <laughs> not just with sewing, but also with life. Very good. Very good. Kathy Ann says, I remember sewing a pair of dark brown elephant pants. <laughs> Probably 1973, 74. 
I was so proud when I wore them to school. I also sewed a blazer to go with it. Wow, you jumped right in. <laughs> That's awesome. Brenda said, I made a skirt for my eighth grade graduation. It was awesome. Only friends knew. It was under my graduation gown. How fun. That is just so great. I remember uh, making... Uh, in nursing school, I there was a little bit of time there that I didn't sew very much because I was so busy. Um, I was planning my wedding and going to school and taking state boards, so all of that. And so I didn't um, sew probably for that probably year and a half period of time. But um, I did help my aunt make my wedding dress. Um, she actually did that for me because I was too, too busy to do it myself. Um, but... I remember I did make an outfit for my rehearsal dinner and I think back on I just saw that picture the other day and you know it was a jumpsuit it would be right in style now <laughs> except it wouldn't fit me anymore <laughs> nope sorry I hit the wrong button <laughs> Kathy Ann said they were Projects, I worked on my sewing class at high school. Yeah, I did too, but I had a real problem with that. Um, I, would, I had a very bad teacher. Um, she was not a warm, fuzzy person, and she hated my sister. My sister was a handful in school, so she automatically assumed I would be. I was not, but she did automatically assume that, which... Um, made it so that she wanted me to do it her way and my mom had taught me how to do it our way and I didn't think I needed to make tailor tacks when I could just use a, you know uh, that's when the the blue pencils like this first came out where they would uh, go out with water and you know I thought why well, I can use that no no I had to do tailor tacks remember those with the little thread they are good especially if you're doing like a a tailored jacket or something you don't have any risk of leaving any trace of anything behind um, but she failed me <laughs> because I didn't do it her way so yeah here I am teaching sewing in my old age and I flunked high school home ed <laughs> so there you go true confession <laughs> Kathy Ann says, I sewed my junior prom gown out of light yellow dotted Swiss. It came out nice, except I was washed out in that color. <laughs> I know. You know what? Um, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure how old you are, Kathy Ann, but my junior prom would have been in 1973 or 4, 1974. And um, we all wore pastels then. I mean, that was the thing, and they nobody really looks that good in pastels unless you're just a supermodel or um, a rich, uh, somebody who has beautiful skin, you know, dark skin, um, just that beautiful chocolate brown that some of our African-American sisters have. Um, they look wonderful in pastels, but red-haired, uh, fair-skinned girls like me do not look good in pastels, <laughs> so... Um, but if you would like to wear it, you wear it anyway. <laughs> You're turning 65 this month. So is my husband on Friday. He's turning 65. I'm turning 65 in November. So we are the same age. Oh, you're in San Antonio. Hi, Barbara. Nice to see you. Ann says, I made tons of doll clothes learn to sew. To learn to sew. It's cheaper to buy clothing unless it's something special. Yeah, if you do it the way that most people do, that's true. But if you shop, um, for example, yesterday, and I should have posted uh, on the Facebook group. And next time I see a sale like this, I will. Girl Charlie had $15 for nine yards of fabric. 
Okay. They were mystery bundles and they were, you could get florals or cozy or stripes or solids. I got uh, a mix. I just said, you know, mix whatever you want. And then I got another one that is cozy, which would be like uh, your Hachi sweater knits and French terry and things that you can use for like cardigans and stuff. So I have a mystery box coming to me and that is going to be a lot of fun. Two, mix, two mystery boxes, but they were $15 a piece. You know, so if you have a stash and you shop your stash, um, because if you find a pattern that you want and and then you go to Joann's to buy the fabric, it is never on sale when you need it. Um, so if you kind of, kind of know what you might want in your wardrobe, what colors you want and that kind of thing, and you can just shop the sales, then it's a lot easier on your budget. I do think that you can save a lot of money. Oh, hi, Barb. Nice that you could join us live. I can't, I can't highlight the newer ones. Sorry about that. If I skip one, then I can't go back. But it's happy. I'm very happy to have you here for sure. Fabric is expensive there um, in the UK. Um, yeah, I've heard that. Uh, have you tried Minerva? Because they tend to have, I think they have pretty good prices. For a little bit, I was doing, I was a Minerva maker. And, you know, the prices of the things, I mean, they sent them to me free of charge to do that. But the prices of things that they were sending did not seem that bad. So, um, I, I would try it. They, and they do ship worldwide, so... Ivy said, shop the sales when they are, when they happen. Yep. Oh, Verna has a mystery box coming also. Good, good, good. So we know about that feeling that you get when you make that first thing, when you first get excited about sewing and that's the ultimate sojo. And I would say, take that experience and write it down, put it in the front of a notebook or something. And then when you feel like you're losing your sojo, go back and read it. And then maybe it'll give you enough incentive to jump back in. My sojo has not been great lately because of just other things that I'm dealing with, but I want to be up here, but you know, it's difficult. So, um, I think by the time I'm past the point of recovery where I can actually jump in sewing again. I, I think it's just going to be wonderful. <laughs> just wonderful. And so she's in Canada. Okay. I thought you were in the UK. We don't get the terrific sales or have discount warehouses. Oh, bummer. Can you, you can come down to, I don't know where part of Canada you're in, but like if you're near the border at all, you could come down. Um, I know there's a lots and lots of them in Pennsylvania. There's a lot of um, discount places. Like right, I think even right around Niagara Falls, you probably could find some good prices. Um, I'm going to share something with you. And this, this needs to badly be updated, but <laughs> hi, Joey. <laughs> Thank you so much for the card, Joey. Joey sent me a beautiful card. Thank you so, so much. All right. This is my sort of sewing notebook. All right. So what I have in here, well, Right now I had this pulled out because I used it. It was a, a blog post on how to make bi continuous bias tape. And I just have a whole, oops, I'm going back to front. I have a whole thing of references. I have a color wheel. I have, um, these are the colors for 
the uh, Caesar uh, heat transfer vinyl because I like to do that also. This is a children's size chart. I can't even remember where I got it, but if you look online, you'll, pro you'll find one. Or you can look for the major brands and then um, look at their size charts and they'll give you a lot of, of measurements. This one, though, gives you head circumference and everything. So um, it's a really great chart. And it goes up to age 14 all the way from newborn. So it's really nice. Um, this is another one, a baby size chart. Just for reference, I have these things and I just keep them. And I do refer to these a lot. And then here I have, oh, this is for Jimber. No, not for Jimbery. I don't know. Oh, this is for men's. Okay, so it was men's um, measurements and what sizes they correspond to and ready to wear. Um, this is the back of my eyelet installer, the old one. I have a the big blue machine now, but um, I took the back of the thing and enlarged it and put it in here so I would always know how to do it. This is an ease chart, which is very helpful. It tells you how much ease, um, like ready to wear, uses in certain um, types of certain measurements. This is notes from a draft your own um, sloper class that I took. And that's my sloper from it. There was a lot of notes. That was from, that was a Berta class. It's very good. I mean, then, then we did pants as well, which was very helpful. I learned a lot from those classes. Okay, then the, these are from expos that I've been to, different um, that one was on uh, combining commercial patterns, um, like taking the sleeve from one and, you know, um, like that. Understanding and Conquering Your Curves. This was a really nice workshop I went to, and there was the, um, the notes from that are in here. Mastering Measuring, that was a good one. This one was all about knits, and it's the notes from a workshop I went to. This was, I think I used to go to the one up on, in Novi, Michigan. That was so good. Um, this one, oh, this is on the Islander sewing method, which is a really cool way, is a really cool uh, method if you ever get around to taking that. Um, uh, Jay Stern Designs, they have a lot of information about pants. This is another measuring chart for children. Just a really good reference to have. If you're making something for, like let's say you're making something for a, a baby and it's a, a, it's a niece or nephew's kid and they live out of state and you can't measure them. You can refer to these normal um, measurements and kind of go along with what ready to wear would be. And, I always err on bigger because then they can always wear it later. Uh, let's see. This is a percent of stretch little thingy there. That's always good to have. And this is this goes through the different brands. I oh no, that was these are the Butterick measurements. That's what it is. And then yeah, this one is all the major brands for kids. Um, children's Place, uh, Fade of Glory, I think that's from Walmart maybe. Um, just all the different brands and what measurements they use for their kids' slopers. And this is a pants fitting course that's free from Colette, which is Seawork. And whatnot. You get the idea. So I have a lot of references in here. And I try to keep it updated as much as I can. Um, but it's, I, I use it so much, uh, maybe not as much lately, but if you have anything like that, um, it's always nice to have it digital, but it's also nice to have it in a book where you can just pull it out. So mine needs to be kind of cleaned out and updated. Um, but it's a great thing to do if you have a spot in your sewing room that you can put that. All right, let's see. I'm behind on the 
comments here. All right. Uh, everyone's saying hi to Joey. Good. Great idea to keep all the info. Yes, it is. I love it. Um, hi, Dolores. Nice to see you. Crystal says, I wanted to mend clothing and started with my own. I haven't made clothing yet. Well, you're sure in the right place because um, this group is so helpful. So if you are in the Facebook group, I'm telling you what, there are experts in there. Um, and 10 people will answer your question in an hour, literally. And if you, know, if you want me to see it, all you have to do is tag me and I'll make sure to go to that post and read it. And I sometimes draw from other people on the answer too, because we're not all, none of us knows everything. So I do love my binder and I do need to update it. <laughs> but as I was telling you that, um, about the sizing, it just popped into my head that I had really never shown you guys that. So I should probably do a video on that. All right. Um, I'm going to get to how we share our legacy with um, the next generation. But first, I want to tell you about the Love Notions um, giveaway that I am having because I am an ambassador for them. So I am allowed to give away a pattern for a giveaway this week. So um, corresponding with their big sale. So if you don't know, this week until Friday, I think Friday midnight, Love Notions is 40% off site-wide. The only thing that's excluded is their brand new pattern, the Aria and the corresponding course. Everything else is 40% off. And if you choose to, you can use my code, which is Dorothy10. Here, let me type that in for you so you can see it. Refer to it. And if you use that code at checkout, you will get another 10% off. So I'll leave that up here for a few minutes. All right, so um, corresponding with their sale, I'm allowed to give away a pattern to a lucky winner. So and I thought I'd do this time YouTube doesn't like giveaways on your channel, so I don't try not to do them here. But I will tell you to go to the Facebook group. You can join. If you haven't joined yet, it's Dorothy's Daughter Community. And um, if you join, please answer at least one of the membership classes or questions. That is the only way I know that you're not a bot, <laughs> okay? And we don't want disruption from bots or anything. Um, so... Um, if you go on the Facebook group, I already started a thread. So what I need for you to do is reply to that thread and I pinned it to the top so that it would be at the top until Friday and you reply with your uh, name, of course, and a choice of patterns that you would want free. All right. And then I will take all the names that responded and I have a little spinning wheel that I'll put them into and I'll do that probably live right on the Facebook channel. So um, yeah, so join the Facebook group, look for the post right at the top and um, you could win a free pattern. So would love children's children to pattern sizes. So like um, how they correlate with age maybe or if you could, yeah, if you could narrow that down for me so I know a little bit what you mean. But yeah, that would be a really good series, Sewing for Children. I have so many ideas in so little time. <laughs> but I'm getting there. I really am. Um, so Love Notions, as you know, is one of the best pattern companies. They're not just a great pattern company. They're good people. I think I've shared with you before, like I test for them. And when I test for them... Um, it's never, uh, just you, everybody sew it and report back and, and, you know, then they put it out. It's not like that. They keep going till it's right for everybody. So it's, it's a wonderful, um, 
it's wonderful that they test that way. And um, that's one of the things that makes me know that they really care about their customers. Uh, yes, grandkids out of state would be a really uh, good, good way to use that book. Um, also, if you go to Patterns for, this is another aside, Patterns for Pirates, they have downloadable measurement sheets that you can download um, of men, women, and boys and girls. So you could download those and keep them updated for your grandkids. Just another aside. Okay, um, so I would love to gift one of you a free pattern. So if you would do that on the Facebook group, just respond to that thread. And I did pin it to the top. It should be in the featured section, and um, we'll do that. So um, Love Notions is an amazing company, and I am honored beyond belief to be part of their uh, team. So it says for, say a store. Okay, say a store, and what, what's the size? Yeah, that's a, that'd be a really good, um, if I can find where, that where I got that chart, it was just one I like printed from online that somebody compiled. If I can find it. I can't really share the chart because I didn't do it, but I could uh, pass on the link. So join the Facebook group because anything that I share will probably be shared on there. And I know, you, Joey, I know you're already part of it. <laughs> so, yeah, so that is a, a um, yeah, that's a really good thing. You can get a free pattern. Sorry. <laughs> it's live, y'all. It's hard sometimes to think of what you're going to say next when it's live. So, Bear with me. <laughs> um, so next, what I want to talk about is how do we make those kind of experiences for our kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, mentorees, whoever. How do we do that for other people? And um, I remember a photography instructor of mine. Now, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but I ran a photography studio for a bunch of years. I shot over 600 weddings. And I remember one guy that I really looked up to said, put yourself in the way of luck, which I thought was pretty good. Put yourself in the way of luck. So in other words, uh, if you know that sooner or later, they are going to have to be walking back this way, be there to catch it. That's what they were referring to, obviously, with weddings. But if you translate that into any kind of crafting and teaching someone, give them something that they can succeed at. Um, and as they go, let them fail a little bit so they can see that they can come back for it, you know, come back from it. I have a lot of granddaughters, but the oldest... Um, we were making scrunchies. My oldest granddaughter messed something up and just put it aside and she doesn't want to do it anymore. And that just breaks my heart. I said, honey, it's not, I have to rip things out all the time. It's not a bad thing. Um, her sister did the same thing, but by the time I got to her, she had already ripped it out. And, you know, so it's just different personalities. So especially for those sensitive kids, um, Put them in the way of luck. So put, give them something that's basic that they can actually do and that will, they'll succeed and feel really good about. So, and something, they're also more likely to su succeed if it's something that they really, really like and want to sew. Um, so sometimes we have to put aside what we like <laughs> and let them do what they want. Um, so, but don't give them something that's just so difficult. Um, that they can't do it. I think that's really important. Do they have a long tunic, Love Notions? Yes, they do. They have several. Um, they have the Terra tunic, Pemberley. Um, the Laundry Day tee can be made in a tunic length. They have many. Um, the new Aria blouse is a button-down blouse that comes in a tunic length. Lots of them. So... If you check out their website, it's lovenotions.com, um, and you'll be able to see tons. But use that Dorothy 10 at the checkout, and you'll get an extra 10% off. It even works during sales. And what that does is it tells them that you 
followed my advice or link and then I actually get commission from that. So um, it helps me to build this channel as well. So um, that's one way to help. Uh, let's see. But yeah, they have many, many um, tunic length things. Love Notions is amazing with their patterns on information on how to in illustrations. Yes, ma'am, they are. They are, they were the first PDF pattern that I ever sewed. Um, you know, I used commercial patterns for years and years and years and then um, stopped. Um, but I, the Sabrina Slims were the first pattern of theirs that I made and I was so blown away by the instructions. They're so wonderful. And they're the Sabrinas, the duets. Um, I think just those two. They come with fitting guides. And believe me, the the booklet that you get, it's an e-booklet, but the booklet that you get from them when you buy those two patterns, one or the other, is worth more than the pattern. <laughs> it's so, so good. So um, definitely buy one of those two patterns so you have that pants fitting guide because it's really good. Body suits. Um, not sure that they have body suits. Um, I, I'm sure you could hack one, um, but I'll tell you who does is Seamwork has body suits in their collection. Um, Jay Lee, I believe, does as well. Uh, if you've never seen Jay Lee, they have their Canadian company, and they have a lot of skating, um, you know, skating outfits and a lot of athletic things. So they have. Um, uh, body suits as well. Um, probably green uh, green field. <laughs> what is that? It starts with green. I'm, I'm having a, a moment here. You know the, the uh, pattern company. I love their patterns. Hang on one second. <laughs> I know. I'll tell you in a second here. I don't want to tell you wrong. Oh, come on. <laughs> For some reason, it doesn't like to let me... Uh, pull up the web when it says I have to go through all that recaptcha stuff every time I want to find something. All right, green style. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't remember it was green something. I hope I'm not the only one. Yes, I, hopefully you can see me. I'm okay. <laughs> uh. Am I back on? Let me know. All right. So let me know what. How do you um, how do you go ahead and do that legacy? I started sewing with my granddaughters when they were really small. It's sitting on my lap. I would work the foot pedal and they would guide it. Um, you can use a Lego tape down to kind of help them keep it straight. We made a quilt. 
um, the three girls each sewed a, a couple different rows and we made a quilt for their mom. Um, lots of things you can do to make it better. So um, what are your ideas? Any ideas? <laughs> um, another thing you can do is if you want them just to get the feel of the um, the feel of sewing, give them a printed piece of paper that's like a dot to dot, um, you know, from a coloring book. Print that on copy paper and let them sew from dot to dot. Um, and then, you know, they can get practice turning and pivoting and all that stuff. And then you can do one that's like a big spiral so they can get used to going around curves. That really helps them get control of the sewing machine. Um, and, you know, you, if you really could be good, you know, you could find a picture that, like, is something they really love that comes together when they stitch um, dot to dot. So, I mean, you could do it, your, make it up yourself even. But it's a lot of fun to do that with them. And um, that really, really helps them gain control. Um, and then start with simple projects. If they love their doll, let them design something for their doll. Um, <laughs> my granddaughter was cutting up old fabric pieces and made a bathing suit for a Barbie by just taking a cloth here and putting it through her legs on the other side and then tying it in the middle. She did that herself and I thought that was pretty genius. Um, you know, a little revealing the on a real person, but on Barbie it was really fine. So um, anyway, I am so sorry that cut out like that. It's just like my brain did on the green style thing. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see what else. Um, that's another thing you can do. Uh, they do have um, kits you can get for um, hand sewing. You can get them a little little kind of cross stitch thing even um, to help them learn how to pull the needle in and out of thread. Also give them patience to do it. I have none. I hate hand sewing. I'll do almost anything not to do hand sewing. Um, and you know, I wish I was better about that because some things are just better hand basted, you know, and I try so hard to not do it. Sometimes I think that if I just did that, I'd save myself a lot of headache. <laughs> um, yeah, we did um, the idea of helping them work on something together. We did um, pictures on fabric and I ha do have a video on how to do that. Uh, there's some bubble jet stuff is what it calls and you print it and then um, it'll stay there. So it's on cotton and we did that and we made you know pictures of them with their parents and we you know made it into a quilt. So I had scraps plus the pictures and they would just lay them out how they wanted them and so it was like one, two, three, one, two, three, all the way until I had uh, enough for, we did like a twin size quilt. I mean, a baby size, a crib quilt. <laughs> uh, twin size would have been much for them right off the bat, but it, we were able to pull together a baby size quilt, for like a throw for the couch. And um, they had so much fun and it was really beautiful. And literally um, my daughter was just, blown away when they gave it to her. So um, that's another thing you can do. Um, how old were they when I started? When, um, let's see, Eve would have probably been 10. I mean, when we did the, this is when we did the quilt. When we started, they've all started sewing with me when they were about four. Uh, little Dottie is just starting. So um, they, um, when they did the quilt, they were 10, 8, 7, I think. Yeah, 10, 8, and 7. Now they're 14, 12, and 9. Not, so she wouldn't have been 7. <laughs> she would have been 5. So yeah, because she was still pretty little, because I had to help her quite a bit still. It might have even been younger than that. It's been a while. <laughs> but um, it was a really fun project, and we, you know, we did it. Every time they 
spent the night. It wasn't like a big long day. We every time they spent the night, we did a couple rows, and so I just saved them. And then um, I usually have them overnight for a sleepover sometime really close to Christmas. So when that day came, I got out all the rows and we laid it across the bed and figured out which rows would look better where. And then um, they sewed those together that day. And then I bo I bound it. So, uh, you know, backed it and bound it. So that was pretty, was pretty fun. Um, let's see. We lost a lot of people when that cut out. My internet's been doing that lately. Um, we've been watching a show and all of a sudden it just spins. I don't know what's going on. But anyway. Uh, let's see. So hopefully you can give that legacy to your kids for sewing. It's so important. You know, up until recently, I think it was a bit of a lost art. And, I mean, however you feel about masks, it did get a lot of people sewing. So, a lot of people were learning how to sew masks just because they wanted to do something to help, which was very commendable. Um, and, you know, it was a, a really great thing to do when you're locked on lockdown. So... When I went to buy my Janome um, Skyline 7 is what I have, the guy in the store said he could not keep the beginner's um, machines in stock because they were just going out the door. Even some that he had on the, um, in the floor for a really long time that were used, all of them were just gone. So all he had were the high end, which was fine because that's what I was getting anyway. <laughs> so... All righty. Well, as far as a chat next week, I may be able to do it. It's the day before my surgery. If you, if this is your first time, I'm actually having a spinal surgery next Thursday, a week from tomorrow. So um, if I'm not on, please know that it's just because I um, wasn't able to or, you know, just I'm going to have a lot to do before then. So I might just not do a chat next week. I am filming some videos so that there'll be some content while I'm recuperating a little bit. And uh, my doctor says at two weeks I will be able to return to light work which that says sewing to me. So I think that I will be able to sew then, hopefully, and um, get back to uh, routine, and which is a lot more than what I've been doing now. And I really apologize for how few videos that I have done over the last couple months because of pain and circumstance. I mean, I can't stand longer than um, about five to ten minutes before my legs go numb and won't hold me. So um, that's going to be better, though. And I'm so excited for that to be better, and I just keep focusing on that. And, um, yeah, and Ivy is Eight Little Stitches. That's my good friend Ivy. She is going to get a, a text from my husband and um, she will post in the Facebook group if you guys want to know how I did. <laughs> like, um, yeah. Or maybe, you know, some, maybe he can say how I woke up and saw Elvis or something. That was the funniest story that I ever had when I worked in recovery room. That I, this guy was waking up and he looked at me and he said, I think I just saw Elvis. <laughs> it was so funny. But anyway, um, but anyway, he will uh, call Ivy and let her or text her and let her know that everything's okay. And um, I will be back with you guys really soon. So thank you, Barb. I appreciate that. And, um, you know, technical difficulties are not something that I can help, but I sure hate them when they happen. Um, like today when that cut out. So um, if that happens, I'm pretty sure the software that I use now will not, it'll, it'll keep adding to the same video rather than 
having to do a new video. At least I hope that's not what I did. So, um, yeah, hang in there, and um, it'll be uh, it'll be better soon. I promise. So have a fantastic day. Um, work on your legacy. Pass it on. It's such a beautiful gift, you know, to have to be able to do things like that for your family. Um, definitely pass that on. Oh, I'm so glad my mom taught me to sew. And I know you guys are as well. Whoever taught you, I'm sure you are so glad that you have that gift. And if you're just tuning in and you haven't sewn yet, um, hang around. We'll help you. And it'll be, it's a wonderful thing to do. And yeah, sometimes when fabric is so expensive, it, it could actually add up sometimes to a little more than ready-made. But how is it made? It's made so well. Um, these clothes last because you've done them and you, you've done them right and you know it. And so it's just, uh, it's a great experience all around. And people absolutely love homemade gifts. So... <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to let you all go. Have a wonderful evening. I will see you soon, very soon. And my apologies again for cutting out on the Internet there. And happy sewing. Bye-bye.